Right. Hopefully these little guys have finished their bath. Looks like it. Nice bit of down in there too, which is good. That little white powder. Come on. Good thing about having grating in the flooring. I love it. It's the best thing I ever, ever did. I can't wait to eventually can build a new loft and I'll have grating through the whole thing all the way out there and I'll won't have to scrape again in my life and that will be fantastic but still time away who knows we might have a bit more luck this year in the one loss but um we will wait and see that's all we can do so these birds i'm pretty happy with how they're going actually we've got two groups um this is the younger group I'm only really just sort of starting to break these ones in uh these are the older group pretty much what we've had since septemberish and there's a couple of older ones in there. There is a few birds that I took out of here, like um, the one in the breeding box, um, and also the mealy hen. Meow. Meow. So these birds, I have not lost one of these pigeons yet. And if you've been watching the last two, three years at this place, I have been copping it left, right, and center. It's been a very difficult time. Um, obviously there's a few people that in my federation that give me a hard time um, because they really don't understand how difficult it is to fly pigeons where I am um, because most of them are just front markers and they get it quite easily um, but I'm pretty pretty happy that um, we've got to the point now where this whole team here I've actually not loft flew these pigeons apart from the birds from last year the rest of these pigeons have not been loft flown at all I've taken a different approach um and i've only really i've done a lot of things this year differently but one of the big things is not loft flying the pigeons so what i did is say this group here i let them out and as soon as they start flying together kidding together when all the babies instead of flying 10 different directions they fly all together i start tossing them what i did with these guys i started what i, I wouldn't really call it it's not training it's just educating i started putting them on the road it was, I was a bit nervous about it but I thought this is the only way we're going to get past the Falcons this year because they pretty much destroyed us over the last couple of seasons. Come here. Come on. And um, it's working. I'm getting out to, I got them out to 1.5 kilometers for a few tosses. They've done pretty well. When I was happy with them, I took them out to 3.5 kilometers. They're doing really well. And then I took them out to 7.5 and, and I just left them there. And basically, over the last couple of weeks, probably before Christmas, um, I generally just take them with me to work or whatever. Um, and all these pigeons are sitting at 22 kilometers is where we've been tossing them last year before we took them out into the races and I've still not lost any and I've got the camera here and I've been watching them come home they basically land straight on the roof or the landing board and they're in within a couple of seconds so uh, I'm really happy like I, these pigeons this year are significantly better than we've had previous years um, and we do only have a very small amount of pigeons there's probably only 30 pigeons in here um, I've didn't really breed too many because my baby's during like eight weeks and I was like you know what? I don't want a lot of pigeons it's just a lot of hard work because it is um, having to deal with a, a newborn um, and obviously the new work requirements I've got as well so it's some pretty high responsibility so um, that's why I was like hey, I'm just going to build a little team we're going to treat them a lot harder than we have the other birds because unfortunately it's tough out here and these birds you can see they're fantastic condition they're going to start molting soon um, so probably from today onwards, they're going to start having a bit higher protein. Um, so I want to try and get them through that molting quite quickly. So next week, I'll probably toss them, continually educate them uh, into next week because I toss them pretty early in the morning um, and they get home like really quickly. Like I'm really shocked because I watch them on the camera um, on my phone and they, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked how they're doing. So. Um, Probably in the next few years, I'm going to really sort of refine this system because it's it's working so well. There's a lot of things I've done differently. And not loft flying and just putting them straight on the road has been one of the biggest things for me because I've not had very much in the way of falcon problems. Because when we're loft flying every single day, the falcons sort of get into a habit and they know. So this year we've broken that habit. Um, the only thing they've got to do is run that gauntlet, which is about 20 kilometers. And at this point, we've only had two pigeons that have been injured. Um, and both of them recovered and are back in still. There's one of them over there. He was ripped open pretty bad, but the birds are still back in doing fantastic. So pretty excited to see. Um, I'm not going to take them past 22 kilometers because last year we took them to 22 kilometers only for like a very small amount of times. 
um, and they the birds done pretty well. I wasn't, um, you know, we had a few, we only raced a couple of races, and um, the birds done reasonably well in those races. So this year, because I don't race many races anyway, because um, it's just too hard to try and balance everything. So this year we're going to take them out. They've already been out to that 22 kilometres more than the previous lot have, and by this time last year at that distance we'd lost a lot of pigeons. Um, lost a lot around the loft. We probably lost 10 in one day because the falcons just pretty much went through them and scattered all the young birds. This year we've not lost any touch wood and we've been out to 22 kilometers probably 10 or so times already. Um, I, like every second day I take them and they've been over the last couple of weeks and they're loving it. So we'll keep that up until they start, I see them start molting. Um, we'll lock them down, we'll pump some protein into them, try and get them through the molt as quick as possible. Well, there's no real rushing with that anyway, but, and then soon as we get back close to the race season, we'll get them back on the road. Um, and then we'll, um, well, well, all I'm saying is it's looking promising this far. Uh, what else have we done different this year? Uh, I've stopped medicating as well. I just vaccinate and then we just worm them. So canker, respiratory, that type of stuff, not giving it to them. Birds got to toughen up because uh, we lost a few uh in our one loft entries because they obviously mixed with other birds and they weren't well so this year we did vaccinate for salmonella to try and offset that but um we'll see how we go so this is the next group that i'm working on these guys here they don't loft fly they just in the basket a couple times a week these guys i've been trying to get them out every single day regardless of the heat it's been pretty much 40 degrees the last few days but um oh, the thing is it doesn't matter the temperature, I'll still let them out and they can have a peck around, flap on the roof, come back in. That's all I want. I want to be able to call them in, they come in. Um, but some of them are flying pretty well. There's a few birds here that do like the heat and for me, that's a, I like to watch that type of thing because if you, I like patea. Patea's hot, looking for birds that can handle that. So I'm keeping an eye on those type of pigeons. Um, only small indicators, it doesn't, it's not huge things saying, oh yeah, that's gonna win. But that's not what's gonna happen. But you gotta, compile all this data together observations and try and make good decisions out of that and that's what we're trying to do um, so these guys are looking fantastic this little hen um, and probably this one is probably this we're going to send the brothers and sisters to those ones to Patea um, but we'll just wait and see how we go brothers and sisters to these pieds too the one cock throws pieds the other cock just throws solid colors but so far these color look I haven't, that's another thing I haven't done this year. I haven't, the only thing I focus on is performance. I've only bred from the pigeons that done well for me over the last year, probably, um, in terms of not losing them, things like that. And one loft results, kind of, they're not really, I don't really like to pick one loft pigeons based on local racing results, because you're just not gonna do that well, in my opinion. And I watch that, I've watched people that are fantastic local races, maybe front markers have maybe got an easy position. They have some fantastic results. They breed off those pigeons, put them in one loft, and they're not, they just miss the mark a little bit. There's not consistency there. So I've just been, I'm just breeding consistent pigeons basically that are hard to lose. It's, so we'll see how we go. I really want to get um, these guys will probably go back on the road again once these are finished molting because I've noticed a couple of these younger ones, like this cock down here, uh, starting to molt a little bit. Um, so basically these ones, we're just going to fly a little bit, try and get them out on the, you know, just moving around a bit, just keep them in that routine of trapping and coming in when I call them, because generally my birds, when I whistle, they all come in, that's how I want it, because um, otherwise we have too many problems around here. So second group, they'll just, like I said, they'll go on the road again when they finish their molt. Um, so I'd say these ones will come through it a bit earlier just because they're late breads. And whatever birds are left over from Patea as well will go into one of these sections that we don't choose and we'll just train them as well. Uh, they probably won't make the race season, but they'll be on the road. Like I said, these birds, they were on the road real early. We've not lost any. So, so I'm, I'm I keep saying it, but if you've been watching this channel, like the last few years we've had it really, really tough and there's a few changes we've made. Breeding from the very best, consistent, hard to lose pigeons pretty much wiping out most of the medication apart from PMV, rota and only salmonella in my one loft pigeons um, and not doing stuff like canker and all that kind of stuff like we don't have that much problem here um, the only thing I may consider in winter if we have a wet winter which I think we might is um, I will look at maybe one dose of coxie as well 
just to be safe, but we'll do that case for case if the birds look a little bit off, but trying to avoid all that. Um, three hens left over that I haven't utilized to breed with. Um, and I've got one little baby here, little hen. Uh, she's just a little bit light for some reason. It's, I think she's not eating enough, but I've put her in here and she's looking pretty good. She's a very skinny pigeon as it is. She's very narrow and long. Um, so I've just brought her across here. She's off uh, Checkmate. So the daughter of Checkmate when I paired him to Storm. So I only got one baby off her this year and that's it there. So I thought we'll just look after it. And these guys, same as the other ones, um, they're on that heavier mix. There's quite a lot of fatty seeds and high protein here at the moment because we're at that time of the year where things about to, feathers about to start falling everywhere. Um, but these guys, oh, and I've got three little babies. I've just sat there for the meantime, which are out of this group, which for some reason are very naughty. These are like some of the naughtiest pigeons I've come across. They just eat in rocks. They go outside, scooting in under here. You notice this year I've blocked off all the front and the sides, but these pigeons go out around the back, come in under and have a bit of a look around here, even though there's no seeds in here. Um, so those two back ones are the naughtiest and he's younger and he's starting to follow them, which I'm trying to crack out of them a bit. I'll let them out this afternoon. They haven't been fed because they come in just before dark last night. So hopefully tonight they'll come in because otherwise I'll keep missing out on food until they come in with the rest of them. These birds are fantastic. So I can't, can't fault those ones and definitely can't fault these pigeons. But let's have a closer look at some of them because you know, some fantastic looking birds in here this year. But, um, Apart from this one, he's a bit of a street pecker. I've got two street peckers actually. I call them the field peckers. They're really hard to lose little pigeons, but they look like ferals. But it doesn't really matter what they look like, as long as they've got the results there. So um, we'll give them a really good test this year, I think. Um, got a few ones like these. Um, I bred a couple like this last year, and I didn't lose any of them, and they, they flew really well too, I'm pretty, so I've bred a lot of them this year. Um, oh, come here buddy. So those, yeah, we'll have to go into a bit more individual basis as we go along, but there's, um, there's just a lot to cover. I haven't been making too many videos, so there's a lot to sort of catch up on, but basically we've just been working on the potato pairings. They're not too far off hatching, and I've been working these birds really hard. Like they've been in the basket every single day, and um, they're doing quite well, but they're very close to molting. Um, so I'm gonna switch that right off shortly. But yeah, there's my little pie, she's doing pretty well. I love her, she's such a good handling pigeon too, so. But I will catch you guys in the next video. This is just an update, and then we'll start going into things a little bit more. Um, Cause it's about to get a little bit exciting. The race season isn't really that far away. We just got to get through this molt, get them back on the road, and then racing starts. And we'll we'll get a couple of races in, I say. These guys are getting pretty keen to go out, I think. Yeah.